Thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. I've got George with me, and we're going to be talking about the idea of spatial intelligence. Before I get into the questions that I've got for you, can you give everybody a real quick introduction? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thanks, Emma. Appreciate you having me on today. People in physical spaces. We anonymously track people as they move around uh, spaces like retail stores, shopping malls, manufacturing facilities, distribution centers. Uh, and then we apply machine learning to that tracking to better understand those behaviors and those movements of people in order to derive business value. So like e examples in retail are, are tracking people as they move through a store. So they're just dots moving around a map, anonymous dots, and then understanding how long they wait in line, for example, so that the retailer can make you have a better experience when you're in their store. Great, thank you. So we're gonna dive into a little bit more of the, those use cases and that idea behind spatial intelligence. But to get us started, I wanna kind of start with a higher level question because some of what you guys are doing is tapping into a couple of different kind of layers of technology and one of those being edge computing or edge AI. Can you start by giving us a little bit of an introduction to what, that, uh, what those tools can do for us? Sure. Yeah. So um, running running the computer vision models that we use, they're they're relatively heavyweight models. You know, computer vision is is a tough computing load. So in some sense, you'd like to do that in the cloud where there's a lot of compute available, but getting all that video to the cloud is is particularly difficult. So over the last you know five years or so, edge computing has come such a long way that we can now run AI really efficiently at the edge. Um, to be able to do these heavyweight computer vision tasks. So for us, we're, we're tapping into existing security cameras oftentimes and running computer vision on those. We'll have a server, and sometimes a large server, sometimes a small server, depending on the number of camera feeds that operates at the edge so that that video doesn't have to go all the way to the cloud and back. It can be processed locally. Um, so there, there are a bunch of advantages to that. You know, the bandwidth is one, but also latency so that the time to do the processing um, is much shorter so you can operate in real time. And then also there, there are some privacy constraints as well. So you, you don't want to ship video um, out into the cloud. Sometimes that can be that can be a security risk or in the case of GDPR, where video is not meant to leave a location, uh, edge computing can be really powerful there. So it's been a it's been a really big, uh, really big change in terms of what we're doing to be able to do this kind of heavy compute at the edge. Um, and there, there are a number of technologies that have made that possible that we're really excited about. You gave me a perfect segue into the next question here. Then, <laughs> So you mentioned that there's been some advancements that have made this a reality and gotten us to the point where we can start to leverage the benefits of these tools. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what some of those um, advancements have been and how that's made where we are today in leveraging this technology possible? Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot about the, the maturation of computer vision. So we're, we're mainly talking about computer vision. That's kind of what, what, what Pather mainly works on, other areas of AI that I won't really address. But in terms of computer vision, it's matured a lot in the, in the last handful of years to the point where there's not a lot of experimental computer vision that you're deploying in production environments. You know, for a while, you'd deploy computer vision and, and it was all experimental. It was all so brand new that nothing was really optimized. But now that it's getting more mature, the, the more kind of commodity computer vision is, is becoming so much more efficient and so much more optimized, which is really kind of the roadmap for, for lots of types of software, lots of types of technology like that. As it gets more mature and becomes more commoditized, it also becomes more optimized and is able to, to run more efficiently in different environments. So there's, there's, um, there, there are pieces of functionality and, and, and tool sets that, that the, the big chip makers, you know, Intel and NVIDIA are, are coming out with that are making it much more possible to run really heavy computer vision uh, at, at the edge really efficiently. Great, and so I teased this last question for us at the beginning when we were talking about use cases, but you brought up the idea of maybe grocery stores and making sure that we're improving experience from there, but can you talk through a couple of other use cases for spatial intelligence? Yeah, let me start by giving an example for that outside of what we do, because I think it's a good way to think about what spatial intelligence really is. I, I would point to the sports world and see what's what's happened over the last 10 years or so in sports, 
where they've been tracking the players in the games for a while. And then it, it wasn't until you know, five or 10 years ago when they started applying machine learning to that tracking to pull out every play that's happening in the game. So if you know where all the players are, that that's mildly interesting to a coach. It's not, it's not super useful, but if you can pull out every single play that happens, now you can use that data stream to more effectively coach the team and to go win more games. So what, what the way we think about what we do is as pulling out the plays that are happening in a retail store, for example, what, what are the things that are unfolding on the ground on the sales floor that matter the most to a store manager or, or to HQ? So some of those things, some examples of those, you know, I gave the example of, of queuing. So how, how long are people waiting in line? And let's go optimize the checkout experience so that those queues are shorter. That applies in, in big box stores, but that also applies in grocery stores um, where, where you know, customers are very sensitive to how long they wait in line. The grocer wants to optimize that experience. So let's open and, and close checkouts dynamically so that we always have the right number of checkouts open. Other examples, though, can be um, customers that are that are either confused or they're waiting for help. Like we've all been, you know, standing in front of a locked case, and you want whatever's inside the locked case, and there's nobody there to come and unlock the case for you. That's something that we could detect automatically, just based on how your dot is moving. You know, you're lingering near the case, and you walk back and forth, or whatever the behavior is. The machine learning can pick that out, and then automatically alert store staff. Hey, can you get over there and, and unlock the case? Because there's a customer uh, that that wants to wants to get something out of it. So these are these are some examples, but there's there's a million others. You know, if you think about the sorts of plays, using my analogy, that would unfold in a retail store. There, there's there's thousands of them. Those are the kinds of things that that Pather is really good at picking out and then giving that giving that information back to the folks that need it. Great. Thank you so much for joining me for the conversation today and helping, I think, introduce people to a, a new use case for how we can leverage AI and edge computing. Um, and I want to encourage everybody who's watching the interview, if you aren't already, make your way over to George's LinkedIn profile, as well as Pather's um, website and or LinkedIn and check them out and ask, uh, feel free to send either one of us a message if you have any questions. But thank you again for your time. I appreciate it and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks, Emma. Appreciate it. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen.